So we started this back in May with Scotland. Here we are just one week out from the Rugby World Cup and we told you we'd hear from every country leading up to kick off in Japan. If you want to catch up on our 18 other teams that we've spoken to on Land of the Rising Scrum, you can do so on offtheball.com. Uh, you can go to the podcast there or listen in on the Go Loud app as well. And you can also watch these back. We'll be on YouTube as well, youtube.com forward slash offtheball. And of course, all our rugby coverage here on Off the Ball is brought to you by Vodafone, team of us, everyone in. So here we are, just one more team left to go. And we're looking at a side who Ireland have plenty of memories against at the Rugby World Cup. And a lot of those, unfortunately, are bad memories from 1999 in Lens, 2007 in Paris and Cardiff four years ago. Argentina have developed quite a, quite a World Cup rivalry with Ireland down the years. And they've come out the right side of it on uh, three of the four occasions. Joining me. Uh, this afternoon to talk about Argentina. I have a man who broke Irish hearts back in 1999, which has uh, pretty much kick-started the Argentinian hoodoo over Ireland and launched Argentina at that moment in time onto the world stage, qualifying them for their first ever quarter-final of the Rugby World Cup. So 55 caps for the Pumas. He's been to three World Cups. Scorer of that try in Lens in 1999, Diego Albanese. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Hello, how are you? Uh, thanks, thanks for you to, to call me and bring him back some old and good memories. <laughs> yeah, it's bad memories for Ireland, but fantastic memories for you personally, because uh, prior to 1999, Argentina had only won, uh, I think, one game in three World Cups. And this was the game and the tournament that kind of launched Argentina uh, and they announced themselves on the world stage and made it to the quarterfinals for the first time. It was a huge moment, and I imagine for you personally to score that try, a huge moment as well for you. Well, it's, yeah, this year is, is 20 years now, and it's incredible how time flies. And as you said, you know, that World Cup for Argentinian team was like a turning point because... Uh, most of us, after that World Cup, we went to to play in, in Europe, you know. I remember um, after the French game in Dublin, um, uh, we were um, there after the game and remember French players coming and asking me if I wanted to, to go to France to play. And I was, me, are you, are you kidding me? Like, uh, it wasn't a, like an option, you know. At that point, I was... 26. I had uh, already. I have just finished my career, my marketing degree. I I was going to come back to Argentina and start working. And suddenly, I went to Europe and and then stay there for six years. And like me, lots of players, you know, that went to France, went to England. Uh, well, some some of them to to Ireland. So it was already a turning point. And as you said, after that game that we, we had the, the game in Adelaide, in Australia, that we lost by one point, that that was actually my last game for the Pumas, that it was heartbreaking as well. And well, in 2007, uh, and it's incredible how how things are now with Ireland you know, and the World Cups, but well, this this year we won't have the, the Ireland-Pumas game, but, you know, it's always special to play Ireland. So talk to me about that game in 1999 because it seems to change really in the second half. Ireland were 21-9 in front and slowly Argentina just crept back into it. Like was, was, was there something said at half time? I know Ireland didn't get any tries. They were just picking off penalties and drop goals slowly. But did you always feel you were still in the game even when you were, you know, 12 points down? Well, uh, I remember actually our captain, Lisandro Arbizu, the, the center, we were at half time in his dressing room and he said, look, boys, we are here. Uh, nobody gives a, <laughs> a penny for us. We have to play rugby. We start passing the ball, start attacking. You know, the first half was all kicking and all drop goals, as you said. And I remember Lisandro asking us to say, we got 40 minutes. And let's let's play. And I think Argentina that second half started playing and started passing the ball. And you know th that actually the try, um, everybody was expecting us to to leave the ball in the forwards and trying to to push you over with the scrum. And Felipe, remember, well, after all, uh, Felipe's uh, 
became a, a superstar in, mm. in Ireland, no? But in but I remember Felipe said, "Well, if the if the ball comes out, we will do that this move." And I remember practicing it like hundreds of times, and then saying, "What are we practicing? It? If then in the game we are not going to 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 make it, you know, to to use it." Mm. And Felipe said that, and that scrum went backwards. The ball was not uh, very uh, a good ball, and we we did that 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 move and. Suddenly we 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 had scores. So uh, yeah, it was um, it was a, a incredible game. And but you know, I, I, as we always say, you know, I, as a winger, I just has to catch the ball and run. You know, the the the, the main the main memory for me for from that game was the uh, nine minutes defending our go, our our goal line. Uh, those dramatic uh, minutes at the end of the game. So. You know, it's, it's um, as you said, it's not a good memory for you. For us, it's nice, but um, you know, it's, it was a, a, a very important moment for Argentinian rugby because after that, as I said, lots of us went to Europe and we started. We we could start to compete against against the European teams and we started to be uh, at the same level. You know, mm-hmm. and. On the try as well, like, I mean, not only did you score the try, but Gonzalo uh, Quesado, he actually had to make the conversion to put you in front. And, exactly, exactly, exactly. And it was a really yeah. tough conversion. It was right out in the corner as well. And, you know, it just, just crept in at the last second. And then you spoke as well about those seven, eight minutes of injury time that you had to constantly defend. And the full-time whistle and the celebrations, like, we have... Uh, we have a picture here on our screen of of you celebrating your try, and just the the joy and emotion in your face is just it's just so obvious to see. It was just a huge moment for Argentinian rugby. Yeah, it was. It was, and I, I actually sometimes you know people start people still hear they said oh that try that try, and I you know you know with uh, it's. Um, how do you say it's a humble moment, you know, because mm. uh, you know you are you are part of a team, and in, in that try, I just had to run <laughs> and score a try, and you know, the, as I said before, you know, the, the pass, the pass from Camardon, the other winger who spots that that uh, Conor Ogier was 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 not drifting, he he went he he st- he stayed with the fullback, and and he missed, he made the missed pass to me. And then Gonzalo kicking that conversion, and then the defense. So it was just a, a, a team effort, you know. So, um, so it's, it's, it's good. And but of course, as you said, you know that was a, a joy for us in 1999. And then in 2003, it was one of the, the of the worst moments of my rugby career. You know, losing against Ireland for one point, and we went home. So. You know, rugby is like that. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But it's incredible how after that, after those games, there was like a, a little rivalry between Ireland and, and Argentina. Yeah, and it's it's still going on to this day as well. I mean, you know, 2007 when Argentina beat Ireland at the World Cup and eventually went on to the to the semi-finals. And, you know, looking back at four years ago as well, that quarter-final, it... I know Ireland won in 2003 in Adelaide in Australia, but it, it has almost seemed that since that day in 1999, there there has been this rivalry between Ireland and, and Argentina. And any time Argentina come over to Dublin, even when it's not in a World Cup, when it's just in a test match, there's, there's always a little bit of, a, you know, it's so physical. There's always kind of skirmishes between players and things. It, it has all just kind of seemed that it stems back to this game 20 years ago that you really upset Ireland that day. Well, actually, yes, and, I, and we we were so so much underdogs for that game, you know. I remember when we won in, in Lance, when we we went to Dublin, and the Irish team had left all the la- all the the stuff in that hotel because they they were supposed to go back there, you know. And I remember being in the hotel, and suddenly some uh, people from the Irish staff went to the hotel and picked the, their stuff up, you know. And say uh, because they were supposed to win that game, and and for us was like being in Disneyland, you know. So, so um, well, it's 20, 20 years ago now, and and uh, it's uh, sometimes it's it's, it's it's nice to remember it, and sometimes you have to 
to leave it and say, well, give, uh, life goes on, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> D does it make it even sweeter that in the 20 years since then, Argentina have gone on and done so much more that, you know, this wasn't, this wasn't the the pinnacle, this wasn't the heist that Argentina got to since then. They've, they've gone on to semi-finals on a couple of occasions and, you know, now, yeah, they're play, now they're playing in the rugby championship and they're playing super rugby and Argentinian rugby has just grown and grown and grown over the years. Exactly. That, that, that was what I was saying to you before. You know, I think the 80% of that team went to Europe. So suddenly, when, when we, you were there, you were here in Argentina playing amateur rugby, to, to suddenly to be playing against France, against Ireland uh, on a test match, one game, he was like, oh, uh, what, what I'm going to, to what, what do I have to expect? And when you go, when we went to France, we were uh, week in, week out playing against these guys. So when we played Ireland, we played France, uh, we used to say, well, I, I played last game last week against this guy, you know, so mm -hmm. that g gave us a lot of confidence, a lot of, of course, preparation. We started to live uh, rugby the whole the whole week, the whole year. And I, I remember in 2000, we we nearly beat South Africa. In 2001, and one, we went to Europe, we won against Wales again at the Millennium for the first time. Then we went to Edinburgh. We we we, we beat uh, Scotland. So that that team started to compete. Uh, and um, apart from that 2003 World Cup that wasn't good for us. After that, it was all growing and growing and growing. And then you had uh, 2005. We beat England in a uh, tweaking. And in 2007, we were in the semi-finals. And from that game on. Argentina kept growing and growing. Of course, sometimes not with the with the results you want, but I think Argentina now is competitive, you know, against any team in the world. And uh, we we'll, we will see what happened now in in a, in what win time when the when this new World Cup starts. Yeah, and how are you how are you feeling leading up to this World Cup now because over the last couple of years, things haven't really gone too well for Argentina. They've, you know, I think eight test matches in a row they've lost now. Uh, they were beaten in all three games in the rugby championship this year. And they, they're just conceding a lot of points. Their defence seems to be off. And even the scrum as well, which is something that we would have always associated Argentinian rugby with, uh, hasn't really lived up to its reputation for a few years now. Even with someone of Mario Ledesma's uh, experience uh, leading them. And now in the pool stage this time around, you've got England and France. France look like they're improving as well. Is it yeah. a worrying trend for Argentina? Well, it's a, it's a very difficult group. Uh, anybody can, can, can see that. You can, have, uh, you can play good rugby and you can lose both games. You know, France, uh, England, France, they've been in two... World Cup Finals, you know, when they are on their day, France can beat any team in the world. England, you know, now is one of the contenders to, to win the World Cup. So the, the pool is very difficult. We can have a very good World Cup and maybe don't win and go back home. And we can have a very good World Cup and, you know, you can lose or win by one point in the last minute. So um, I think we are, we, we will do, we will be ready. The thing is, uh, oh, it's, 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 a, it's a long story, you know, like, for example, you were talking about the scrum, the scrum, maybe, in my opinion, in the, before Mario Ledesma uh, taking over, uh, maybe the scrum wasn't the, the, uh, a focus for, from the last uh, management or they, they, they started maybe to, to prefer another kind of props and maybe... It's more like a, like a, a, a big problem, an infrastructure problem, you know? Mm. And Mario, he came back, he said, no, the scrum is part of our DNA and we have to go back to basics. And But it's going to take time to have, again, that scrum, that powerful scrum that we are, we are all fun about that, you know? Uh, you know our, the scrum for us was one of our, our tools, one of our strengths, now maybe it's not as it used to be, but we want 
we wanted to 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 be again um, uh, one of our strengths. So we will see. It's going to be difficult for Argentina, as I said. It's it's a tough pool, um, but you know, the, it's, it's key. The first game against France is going to be key. The, uh, but we will see. We will see what happens. Yeah, I think the fact that uh, Argentina are playing France in the first game as well is really interesting because it probably is the biggest game for them. Uh, do you think it's good maybe to be going out and playing your most important game first up or would you like to have a couple of easier games early on to kind of get back into form? I would have liked to have one game before. Mm. I would have liked to have the Tonga or USA because, you know, that first game of the World Cup, you know, is, is always... You are a bit nervous. You're a lot of. Uh, you're waiting for it for for the last <laughs> months, years, and some. You know when you you play your your first game. Well, that, that, that's it. Okay, we've we've done it, and now let's let's move forward. So I don't like to play France the first game and be in such a key uh, match, but that's the way it is. It's going to be the same for them. No, I, I I don't think the French are very happy to play us. To play against us, uh, neither. So, I think it's going to be it's going to be the same the same situation for both teams. And uh, you know, we we got a good record against the French. So, we will see. I hope it's gonna it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a great game. It's gonna be very tactical. I think uh, you know, very important the, the set pieces, the 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 kicking game and uh, well as always as a, as a World Cup is normal is and one thing that uh, is going to be hugely important as well um, the the fact that so many of these Argentina players play together for uh, Jaguares in Super Rugby I think it's all but five or six of the the thirty one man squad are playing for Jaguares in Super Rugby and the fact that they got to the final of the competition this year and were Absolutely fantastic all season. A uh, like how, how good how good should Argentina be? The fact that they essentially have all been playing together all season, whereas a lot of these countries, you know, they're split up into different clubs around their various countries, and they only really came together in June. Well, it's it's a good point because sometimes you said, well, maybe the European guys are more fresh. I don't know how you say fresher or they fresh. Are, yeah, they don't have. Yeah, they don't have too much competition, so many games. But on the other hand, if you ask me, for these players, that most of them are under 26, 27, to have the experience of being in the final of a Super Rugby competition, go to to Christchurch, playing the Crusaders uh, is with such a, a, a um, with so much pressure and the environment, I think it's th- those things you can buy them. You know, you have mm. to leave them, and uh, you know, and uh, and uh, when we were here saying, "Oh, the Hawaiians are in the semi-final, the Hawaiians are in the final. What's going to happen in the World Cup? They're going to be tired." And we were all saying here, those kind of experiences you have to leave them. You know, uh, and and I think now after and I, actually that. That had a, an effect in the rugby championship. The, the Pumas, I think, were knackered. After that World Cup, after that final against Crusaders, the week later, they were playing the All Blacks here. Mm. So it's difficult to play those kind of games week in, week out, week in, week out for two, three months. These Argentinian players went to went to the South to, with the jet lag uh, twice in one month. You know, so mm. they they went to Australia, came back. They went to New Zealand, came back, and they were playing New Zealand, and then Australia, and then South Africa. So they were very tired. So I think they will get to the to work up much fresher, much um, with with good rest. And um, and as, as I agree with you that the, the fact of being playing for for the whole year together, I think is going to be very good. And of course, having played. Lots of game under pressure, and rugby, international rugby, is playing under pressure. Who handles better the pressure? And uh, well, we hope that Argentina can handle it better. You know. And from an Irish point of view, uh, I think we're just relieved that if Ireland are going to play Argentina at this World Cup, it'll be at the very least in a World Cup semi-final. We don't have to meet them until <laughs> then. Uh, can Argentina get to a World Cup semi-final though? If Argentina 
goes through the pool, they can do whatever you can imagine. Mm. I think it's going to be the, the main thing is the pool. You know, Argentina cannot think any more further than France now. And, but if we can go through that pool that is the, the worst or the most difficult in the competition, I think then you can, they, can, they can beat Australia, they can beat Wales. On their day, you know, mm. say you mean it's rugby, but um, but I, I think it's, it's, it's this, comp- I don't know, what do you think, but it's maybe the, the most tight or how do you say, tighter World Cup in history, you know? Yeah. Because if I ask you, on their day, England can be New Zealand, uh, South Africa now, they are, they are much better than improving. Wales, uh, Ireland now are one in the world. There are five, six uh, teams that uh, that can win the World Cup. You know, I I, I remember four four years ago it was about who who can beat New Zealand, and now I think three or four teams, five teams can beat New Zealand now. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other hand, you know, the, the the main difference for me is that New Zealand are uh, used to play under pressure and knowing that they are favourites. We will see how. Though these teams that now suddenly are favourites as well can handle that pressure, you know? Uh, when you are not the underdog, when you are the one who should win, well, that's a, that's another kind of pressure and we will see who can handle that, you know? Yeah, and that's a kind of pressure that Ireland have been dealing with for a long, long time. Diego Albanese, thanks a million for joining us on the show. Oh, it's been brilliant. I, I follow you on, on Twitter. I, I follow you the... The, uh, a lot of uh, when 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 Brian or Driscoll go go you know go to your your show I I, I normally watch uh, off the ball so thank you very much it's been a pleasure and an honor your call and let's keep in touch thank you very much yeah certainly we'll uh, we might give you a shout during the World Cup if Ireland and Argentina play each other oh, of course I will be always available thank you very much and good luck. Thanks, Diego. So that was Diego Albanese there, former Argentine international and scorer of that try in 1999 that pretty much kick-started Argentina's place in world rugby, uh, sent them to a quarterfinals for the first time and ignited that rivalry that has been there pretty much since that day between Ireland and Argentina. So that is the 19th team we have covered on Land of the Rising Scrum. We said at the outset, we're not really going to do Ireland because we know too much about them anyway and we're going to be talking enough about them anyway uh, throughout this summer and uh, over the next few weeks when the Rugby World Cup kicks off. So that's every team. As I say, if you want to listen back to any of our previous episodes, we've spoken to some brilliant people, uh, brilliant journalists and former players and current players and head coaches as well from some of the countries that are going to be at uh, the Rugby World Cup. You can listen back to all of those on offtheball.com forward slash podcasts or on the Go Loud app and you can watch these back as well on youtube.com forward slash offtheball. Uh, that's it for Land of the Rising Scrum but we are going to be back uh, with another pretty spe- pretty special Rugby World Cup show coming up uh, kickstarting next week and uh, carrying you through right through until November where who knows Maybe Ireland will still be there at that stage of the tournament. But until then, we'll speak to you soon.